Diddy, 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 Brother Love, a.k.a. the Diddler, a.k.a. Diddy do it, Diddy not do it, a.k.a. everything, all of the above, a.k.a. Freaky Time. Rick James ain't got nothing on me, bitch. Listen, this Diddy situation, you know, I know he would often say, uh, can't stop, won't stop. This shit is can't stop, won't stop him. And it just gets worse and worse every day. I watched the raids. That that was sad. My prayers go out to the children in the home. And also, I've done a video on this already, but it keeps scrolling up and down my timeline. I can't stop talking about it. And I did the video. It's on Facebook. And I've talked about the Diddy brother love. And I had a brother come into my comments and tell me that I'm trying to tear a black man down. Now, I'm a fan of Diddy. I I bought the Sean John. I bought the, I think I even bought the Sean John sneakers. I had the Sean John Velour. I used to be up in Macy's copy that shit. I love bad boy. But what we have to understand is this. If a, the, the chickens typically come home to roost, okay? Now, the man hasn't been declared guilty in the court of law, but we know he settled to $30 million with that woman. He didn't just do that shit out of convenience. He did it because he did something wrong. All right. And now others are coming out. And, and you've heard numerous stories about Diddy and these antics and bringing people to the house and he want to play dick swords. We, we've heard these stories over and over again. Countless bad boy artists are dead. They don't have money. They don't have teeth nor health insurance. And he's just gliding in the sun. And to the brother that told me that, and we have to be careful as a community because one thing we love to do in our community, in the black community, we love to somehow protect and harbor the worst among us. We love to protect that big street nigga that's kicking your dough in and robbing your ass and pillaging the community. We love to protect them because he's real. And we got to stop that. We in 2024, we need to get out of this thug nigga mentality. If you do wrong, there are consequences, okay? All right? These people that are reporting these heinous acts that happened against them, they are black people. He did this to black people. So this nigga going to sit here and tell me, hey, you going to get the black man. Get the fuck out of here, man. You act like he doing this shit to some white folk. No. No, he is taking the life and souls of black people and black artists. And he's been doing this shit for over 20 years, man. You had the people walking to get fucking cheesecake, everything. And I'm even thinking about suing them just because I'm traumatized. I'm tired of seeing the shit on my timeline all day. It's ridiculous. There are numerous stories. You know, typically people love to use the, the term they are hating on me as a term. Sometimes you have to be careful with that. You have to watch people use that because a lot of people that use that are doing shitty things. They're shitty people. There are a lot of people out there that are fucked up individuals. If you fall out with everybody, you don't fell out with everybody. Like you, some angel or some shit that fell out of the heavens and the world is picking on you. No, it's you. It's you. You the common denominator and all those people not fucking with you no more. So I'm not going to protect them. And I'm a comedian. This shit is funny to talk about. I'm going to keep talking about this shit. And there are numerous, numerous people. Man, when I was doing comedy, uh, I used to, when I started my comedy career in Atlanta, I would perform at the old Uptown Comedy Club. There was a brother who was on Bad Boy named Mark Curry. And me and Mark would roast all the time. We would talk shit together. We'd talk shit on Twitter, everything. And he had wrote a book about Diddy called Dancing with the Devil. And he wrote that book, I want to say back in 04, 05 or something. And I remember bringing him on stage, telling people about the book. I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? But there have been books. You have Big Gene Deal, his security guard. There are countless amounts of people. There are victims everywhere. You telling me he did everything right and, and the feds are just going to come out of the sky, the ocean, 
sending boats, planes, trains, and automobiles to kick his door in. And he didn't do nothing wrong. He just in there dancing and singing and, and holding Bible study. Huh? No. No. I mean, it, it's sad to me. I hate to see people I grew up on, especially brothers, fall. I don't like to see it. And and to those, and to the brother that came on my page talking about, what about the white man? All this shit. Listen, if you know you black and you gonna get more time than that white boy, guess what? How about just not doing the crime? Huh? <laughs> I don't understand. Yes, you gonna get more time, nigga. Yeah. They go, they gonna throw the book at you. So if they gonna throw the book at you, don't do the shit. Don't fuck over people. Shit, I don't want to hear that shit. It's a weak excuse at this point. If you got the information, quit repeating it. Motherfucker go to jail, you going to jail. Yeah, you're going to get more time than what? Yep, yep. Life ain't fair. So if you know that information and you're stupid enough to do shit to people and do wrong, guess what? <laughs> You'll get what you deserve. That's life. That's consequence. People got to learn that. Now, the good brother Mark Curry has something to say. Uh, and I know this brother, good brother, man. He does construction now. We used to roast all the time, but uh, let's check it out. Hey, Amen. Craig Mack and Black Rob did not live to see this moment. And this was a moment like, I'm telling you, Craig Mack was so... He was so furious with Puff. He was just, he hated Puff so much that I used to have to calm Puff, I mean, Craig down. Like, Craig, just chill out. Let's go record a couple of songs and, you know, let's just chill out, man. We we, we was on tour. We was like, yo, come on, man. Just, you know, we gonna make it work. He was just, he hated Puff. He hated Puff. Then I had Black Rob. He hated Puff. He, 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 not like hate Puff, like, it's just, yo, you be like, man, only thing we got, sometimes you realize, the only thing we got is us. Now, let me tell y'all something. Look at how many bad boy artists had to go to jail. And you be like, yo, we, 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 when nigga had to go to jail and was an artist on your label, so the whole time a nigga was in jail, he was in jail, and they was like, hey, ain't you a uh, bad boy from bad boy? Ain't you from, and people be, ain't you from now? When people be, they seeing me, they be like, ain't you, ain't you? And you be like, yo, people had to go to jail that worked with them. Shine. Prison. Loom. Prison. Rob. Prison. Yo, man. I knew I ain't want to have nothing to do with it right when that was going on. I was like, okay, that's my calling. Everybody who's who want to be down with him is going down. And then I looked. And then I was like, yo, I'm starting to see what's going on. What, what I saw was, I was like, Mark, it was like, it's that nobody that's around him that or even as that's around you, you know, is willing to tell him how to humble himself. Now, I've been telling Holmes, I said, Holmes, Holmes is Diddy. I said, bro, listen, there's no way in the world you can keep going on in life being this big you and thinking that everybody around you is little. There's no big you and little me. That's what I used to always have to say. Yo, no, there ain't no big you, little me. Ain't none of that. Go get you some what? Man, I'm ain't no big you little me. Just because I come and I want to be an artist on your label don't mean that I got to conform and think like how you think and all of this. I got my own life. I got my own friends to hang out with, do my own thing. You understand? That's just how I go. And we don't like hanging out with you, actually. You understand? Because this is just business. I just want to do business with you, but I don't want to hang out with you. That's how I always was. I was like, I do business with you. I don't want to hang out with you, though. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like the way y'all party and stuff. I don't like the hours you go out. I don't like none of that. You know what I'm saying? I don't like how y'all get down, period, period. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how I was. And I just leave that there. But look. Now, 
He said, do he need, do you know, they's like, do he need, you know, don't, why would you pray for him? Everybody needs prayer. So in this time right now, right now, I pray that, yo, let me tell y'all another thing real fast before I get to that. I don't know if Puff is strong enough to go through with like with Bill Cosby and R. Kelly's going through. I'm being honest with you. I don't I don't think that he's able to do it. And so I really think we need to pray for our brother because you just don't want him to take the other route out. And some people do that. And but when you look at it, you'd be like, how many people took that route out as a result of energy you created? It's like, yo, everything you've done. It's coming back to you. It's coming back on you. Everything, every way that it go, you got jail, you got probably sitting there thinking about jumping off a building or flying your, you be like, damn, man. You be like, yo, it's playing on him with the pilot, pilot down. He, he got a pilot, the pilot. Uh, is he flying the plane by himself? That's what we want to know. Is he flying the plane by himself? Yeah, you know, I had thought about that too, man. Now, it was reported that when Puff threw the party uh, out in D.C. and Howard, like earlier in his career, when some of those kids died, I don't know, eight people died, they got trampled to death, he was, you know, thinking about taking himself out. Um, With everything that's hitting and these walls are crashing down, I would not want him to do that. Um, but, you know, the chickens are going to come home to roost and what you do, do in the dark will come to the light. And I'm not even trying to be judgmental. All I'm trying to do is tell you about universal law and karma. It just is what it is. A uh, matter of fact, this is a psychic um, that I don't know, maybe a year ago, uh, this is a psychic that talked about it. Uh, somebody said, "A rush, dude's not going to jail. I can feel it where the sex track. I don't know where they at, bro, but I don't think this is what a rush said. Shout out a rush. I don't know where they at, bro, but I don't think they going to sign off on no warrant like that and go kick a rich man's door in if they don't have anything. They went there with military tanks, vests. I saw cops with parachutes on, rocket launchers. I mean, come on, man. I saw a submarine come up in the back of the lake he got. I, I Listen, I don't know. You know what I mean? But I can tell you what. The chickens are going to come home to roost, and you just got to deal with what you got to deal with, man. Universal law. Universal law don't don't really care about your status, how much money you got. It's gonna hit you. And even for the richest man, can't avoid sickness and death. So uh this was what a psychic had to say, and she did this maybe last year. This is kind of creepy. Both Jay-Z and Beyonce, because see, he procures her out there. He is her handler and he is the one that pushes her out there public and then he profits off her. So we're looking at, and I don't care how much talent you think they have. I don't care how much talent you think they have. She was chosen for him. It is a karmic thing looking at their chart, but he was, she was chosen for him in order to help him get where he needed to go. So she's the muse, but let's use this in a different way. Sometimes we use the word muse in the terms of profiteering off of it. Wait a minute. Hold on. I thought this was the Diddy thing. I don't know what. Hold on. Let me let me see if I can find that footage of her talking about Diddy because I bet mean, she kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, this, I ain't seen no shit like this since... Uh, I haven't seen anything like this since OJ, man. I have not seen nothing like this. This is very creepy. I know he was walking around. Yeah, I'm guessing this is it. Hold on, y'all. Let me let me pull this up for y'all. 
She talking about Jay Z right there. I don't know why they implicating Jay Z. Y'all need to leave Jay Z out of it now. I can't lose Jay. Come on, man. Leave Jay Z alone. Don't put him in the shit. He ain't got nothing to do with that. That's a good man. It's just getting crazy out here, man. This music, this shit. Was 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 is the music industry? I got a question, y'all. Has the hip hop music industry, even though it has provided some of us wealth as black people, has it been more detrimental to us than the crack epidemic? Somebody need to call me and tell me that. Because I'm going to pull up what this psychic had to say. And she did this last year. So I don't know. Miss Cleo. Pull that. Here we go. Since I'm my own. All right. Let's see. I'm guessing that's. We'll look at that other clip later. But uh, let, let me see. That's not it. There we go. All right. Let's check it out. Showing me that he's being shut up from outing them or from speaking about them for some reason. So there's a hierarchy going on here and there's a total takedown of him. He is being sacrificed. So he may think he gets away with stuff. He may think it's cool he does what he does, but now he's the sacrificial lamb. And I do mean that. There's something that comes up with him in March, speaking of the lamb, during the Easter time frame, March, April, right in that time frame. That's why I said lamb. There's something else that's going to come up with him. We are not done. It is a complete takedown. And then you will see this man's energy. Now that's scary. That's scary. She she literally uh, broke all that down. Um, but it looked like she had something too to say about Jay-Z and Beyonce. I'm not going to get into that. We got we to gotta take one thing at a time. Because we are watching the total collapse of all of our music industry, all of our big titans, from Russell Simmons to now Puff, uh, of course, R. Kelly, uh, Bill Cosby. We, I be mean, some giants. And listen, I'm not, look, look, you do wrong, you do wrong. You know, a lot of people talk, talk to, like I say, go but try to go back to the race shit, but wasn't nobody more powerful than Weinstein or Weinstein, whatever the hell his name was. And you know, they threw his ass under the jail. Okay? And I didn't hear one person in his race talking about, hey, you, hey you're attacking him. Don't attack our kind. No. No. They threw his ass away and threw the key away. But I guess these guys, you know, they just have all this power and they just take advantage. I, I don't know. And then people, too. I know, I know that people will put themselves in position because they want to make a gamble. You want to get famous. And I want to say this to anybody that is out here in entertainment and you are trying to get on. Uh, you Look, don't put yourself in a compromising position because at the end of the day, the only thing that, that who puts you on is you. Well, first of all, is God and you. That's who puts you on. You're going to get on through your brilliance, your creativity. You don't want to put yourself, because sometimes young artists like comics or singers or dance, whoever, they think, you know, oh, let me let me go over to this person and, and open these cheeks up. And, and they're going to put, they're not even in a position anymore because the internet has democratized attention, right? You know, whereas before, NBC, ABC, you know, people had to jump through hoops. You had to sleep on the couch in Hollywood. But now, even if you jump through that hoop and get on that show, more than likely nobody's even watching that shit. Nobody even cares. So now with the internet, we're all able. Just do your work. Do your work. Be passionate. Be creative. And it'll show up for you. Uh, this is a good brother, Gene Deal, who has been talking about Puff 
I mean, you can go back. Gene Deal was Puffy's bodyguard, big brother out of St. Louis, big, strong brother. And he'd been talking about him for years. But this is Gene Deal's take. Puff was had Kim in the room. Remember Usher? We So this is Gene Deal talking about some situation with Puff and Usher. Okay, I'm just reporting. All right. So let's see. Was at the Swiss Hotel. Remember Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. You know, and a lot of more people know, didn't do you right when you was at Diddy Camp. Y'all put it together. Oh, my bad, y'all. That was him talking about, let, let's rewind here. Now, he's talking about Usher uh, coming this is a situation that Gene Deal, Gene Deal is the bodyguard uh, for P. Diddy and well, former bodyguard of P. Diddy back at the height of Bad Boy. And this is when Usher was at Diddy Camp. Okay. I, I'm not, can you hear me now, AZ Face On? Y'all got to be able to hear me right now. Can you hear me? Let me make sure y'all can hear me. Can y'all hear me now? Hello? Can y'all hear me? Let me know if y'all can hear me. Just send a thumbs up or something. Okay, okay, cool. All right, so this is Gene Deal. This is a bodyguard for Puff back in the day, and he's talking about a situation with Usher, okay? I'm going to play this. I got to run to the restaurant. I'll be right back. Y'all listen. Remember Usher? We was at the Swiss Hotel. Puff was had Kim in the room. Had one of Keith Sweat's baby mothers in the in in the uh the big room outside the master bedroom. He came outside in his robe. He came outside in his robe. She gave him a fellatio right there. His back was turned to me. She gave him a fellatio. You knocked on the door. I came and opened the door for you. Puff went in the room. You came in the room and kissed that girl dead in the mouth. You know, and a lot of more people know, didn't do you right when you was at Diddy Camp. Now, y'all heard him say that that was one of Keith Sweat's baby mamas. Uh... I don't know. I know one of Keep Sweat's baby mamas on the housewife. I'm not saying that was her, but who knows? <laughs> Maybe that Scooby Doo who it was, but this is sick. Usher was in Diddy Camp as a child. Sick, man. Y'all put it together. Damn, man, and you said that, I know you can't go into detail, but you said that uh, it was a situation where Diddy sent him to the hospital? Let Usher explain that to you. Let Usher mom explain that to you. And the hospital was in Scarsdale, New York. Woo, boy. 
Oh my gosh. I don't know what, uh, man, I, I would like to see that report of why Usher was hospitalized, but I'm sure they had him in there under another name. Uh, this is getting rough, man. It's getting hairy and it looked like the tentacles of the diddler are primarily in everybody's back. He's touched everybody in the music industry, either directly or indirectly with baby mama's children. It just goes on and on. And this is just getting out of control. Also too, I have footage from when they raided the house. So this is from the house raid. Oh man, they tore it up. Look at that. They went through there, boy. I wonder what it is they looking for. They are really looking for something, man. And how does TMZ get all this shit? Like who, does everybody work for TMZ? They even got into the safe, bro. How did they get into the safe? Well, look how the feds do when they come in there. Oh, my, my. What is that in the mirror? Went all through the bed. Well, he reads the power of now. Shout out to Eckhart Toll. I read that, too. Look at all them sneakers and all that, all them clothes and goods. Look at that. Mm-hmm. They ransacked the whole place. I really feel sorry for the children, too. Somebody said, uh, Taya Harden said that they found a tunnel under Diddy's house. Oh, my God. That is crazy. Look at that. That's the baby's rooms look like. Ugh. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna tell you this. Uh why don't the feds come at like four episodes? Of, no, they came at two because hey, once you once they got that subpoena to go kick that door in, they don't they come at any time. Well, they ain't gonna come at four a.m. They wanna come right when you least expect, brother. Ain't no there's no given time when the feds gonna come kick your door in. Is there a given time when the crooks come kick your door in? No, they'll come at 10 a.m., 7 a.m. It doesn't matter. 